Thanks, everyone. Uh, as Lee said, uh, my name is Eve Del Grosso, and I'm the CAT administrator at Bale and Water. So we'll just go through uh, just a little bit about Bale and Water before I just give you an overview of a couple of little projects that we've worked on recently. So Bale and Water is a regional water authority situated in the southwest of Victoria, around the city of Geelong, Ballerine Peninsula, and we extend as far west as the coastal town of Apollo Bay on the Great Ocean Road. So we cover an area of approximately 8,000 square kilometres and we have a permanent residency of uh, 300,000 people. So Balm Water owns, operates and adds to an um, asset base of about $2.3 billion worth of assets. And there's just a, a little breakdown of some of our major infrastructure that we work with all the time. So over the last couple of years, um, uh, sorry, um, over the last couple of years we've tried to incorporate some of the new functionality that 12D um, has provided to us and we've just reviewed all our processes and how we're collecting data and wanting to add to data in the field. So uh, we have an in-house survey team that's three surveyors and basically we run uh, two field teams. And we're one of the few water authorities left in Victoria that actually still has an in-house survey department, which is a real bonus for us. So one of the major, um, one of the things that the survey department does is um, provide all the feature surveys, the service locations and the asset exposures for our capital delivery team. And to do this, we have a feature code library of over 400 individual feature codes. And the reason why it's so large is because we need to make sure that we are capturing, well, we've got a code for each instance of diameter that we may be capturing or valve type. So previously, they were all uh, flagged as individual codes. What we've decided to do is approach it more as a GIS, especially with the advent of um, attri using attributes more for our data and we wanted to value add information to our objects that we're capturing in the field as we, we go and we're there. So we decided to group those 400 odd codes into light categories, so water, sewer, recycle, topography, etc. And once we'd grouped those, then we further uh, broke those uh, categories down into the geometry type of the object that we were capturing. So whether we were capturing it as a line string or as a point feature. So obviously an advantage of this is that we're reducing the number of codes that we need to recall, um, but we're also able to tag those objects with that extra information in the field. So just to give you an example of capturing a water main, we had to cater, we had 20 codes just to cater for all the different diameters. Um, we we're able to now take those 20 codes and just convert them into one code, like a water pipe. And by attaching multiple attributes to that pipe, then we we're able to um, add the specific. So drop down list to choose the diameter, the material of the, um, the pipe, how we actually capture the pipe, so the justification of it. And the other thing we've been able to do is include a comment field for each of our codes. So if there is something a little bit different or noteworthy about that feature, we can tag that object so everybody is aware of it. So the other benefit of moving to a bit of a system like that is that we're now able to uh, define our objects better in our 12D projects by being able to extrude pipes uh, directly using our map file by using those attributes to um, draw the objects in 3D. And this also applies to our point symbols. So where we've um, had a size that we've captured, uh, we're able to use that directly to better represent uh, the feature in our projects. So you would have seen examples of, or well, you may have seen examples of trees and how trees are represented. We capture both the trunk as a size and the canopy of the, um, the foliage. And we can use uh, the, those attributes to define the different parts of that symbol. So the other thing that we had to do with overhauling our field code definitions was to change um, the map file, because previously it would 
have each of those 400 codes listed as key. Now we had to move that over so that we were really looking at the attribute of the feature and, and being able to classify that out using the attribute. So we're just finding some really good benefits out of using this attributed data. Um, as I mentioned, it's the group classifications that really makes it easier to know which codes you want to pick because you can sort of intuitively work your way down uh, what category am I selecting, how am I, sele how am I capturing that data and then just tagging the information from drop down lists. Again, as I said, we're better able to represent um, the objects in our projects and we're value adding to that information by being able to tag those objects with a lot more detail. Hopefully this leads to the fact that because we're supplying more quality information to our designers, then hopefully they don't have to change their alignments of the um, assets that they're designing and therefore we're not going out and doing more survey and um, more service locations and exposures. Uh, so the second project that we worked on was actually connecting the GIS directly into 12D. So Barnwater began building its GIS back in the 90s and um, they store all their data in an Oracle Spatial Database. Uh, previously, we, we always create a functional data set at the start of capital projects so that the designers have um, a data set to start doing a desktop analysis of where their alignment's going to go and that data set contains both um, a cut of the asset information we have in the GIS, the map base. We also provide an ortho photo and any LIDAR that we have on file. <coughs> so with that old system, we used to take it direct, sorry, we used to take that directly from our GIS viewer and it was just um, a DXF output from a third party application. So it was just dumb data, it's just lines and points and that got imported into our projects and that file applied. Over time, um, that system really wasn't getting maintained and it was using translation tables to draw it out and it got to the stage where we just had no confidence in the the currency of the data. So we really wanted to bypass that intermediate step and go directly into 12D and with the GIS uh, download wizard now available to us, um, we decided that that was the place to start. So uh, what we did was we built a macro to interrogate our GIS and um, we built that into a chain which could be run off a button on um, a toolbar. And this was ensure that we always got um, a consistent output. And we also wanted to make it a pretty straightforward process so the operator didn't have to worry about uh, which tables they were accessing and which filters and queries that they needed to apply to the data. So all really the um, operator needed to do was define a area of interest in a model and once that chain was activated, they just get prompted for that model and the macro just goes away, interrogates the, the database, returns the data and then the chain just applies a little bit of a, a clean up, adds some annotation just for our standard output, which you see there on the right. So obviously a big advantage is that because we're accessing the database, we're not just getting um, the spatial information, we're also getting all the tabular information stored in the GIS as attributed data. So that's just uh, an, a snapshot of what our GIS view is in um, the GIS system and what our output is in 12D. So basically we wanted it to match up but with our, the same colour coding and symbology that we normally apply in our projects. So just to um, sum up, there are still um, a couple of tweaks that we still have to make with both systems, but it really has given us an opportunity to review our processes and the important things being that we're, we're the ability to actually use all that data that's available to us, both the, the spatial data as well as that tabular, that extra detail. And 
while we're in the field, we're able to like, value add to the data that we're collecting by being able to tag it with a lot more specifics about uh, the, the object that we're, we're seeing and capturing then and there. Uh, another benefit of the projects we, we've just done is that we're, we're making use of some of those extra tools and the new functionalities that are in our software resources. So hopefully we're getting a bit more value from money from paying our subscriptions and getting some efficiencies out of that processes that we're um, implementing. And lastly, hopefully that all leads to the fact that we're providing better quality information and data to our designers so that they are able to make better informed decisions and maybe some less work for us to go back to and less questions to answer about what we're actually giving them. So, thank you.